Everybody seems happy with the president's speech last night, but now this, this will be the true test. Ann Coulter, of course, the uh, uh, brilliant columnist, best-selling author, her book, In Trump We Trust, uh, also uh, one of the very best on Twitter. Follow Ann Coulter on Twitter, uh, Facebook, and now Instagram. Go to her website, AnnCoulter.com. Ann Coulter, how you doing? Great. How are you, Mark Simone? Very good. All right, let's see. <laughs> Well, unlike uh, the entire media, even when I disagreed with the president, and there were several policies I disagreed with, that was a great speech, really well delivered. <laughs> you know, after Republicans have been suffering for such a long time under presidents who cannot speak, cannot put three words together, he really, he knows how to give a speech. He didn't stumble over his words. Um, if I were um, doing, you know performance criticism uh it went a little too long and i don't think we needed two stories on north korea um but no he was really he was really really good he hits the right points he doesn't stumble over his words he doesn't um he stresses the right words it was really good you know if you watch the trump haters the um the tom broke uh, the entire media yeah but they were funny because that was <laughs> oh over my God. How do you attack it? It was a good. So they said, "Well, clearly he was reading a teleprompter, as if, that, <laughs> as if that's never happened before." <laughs> no, it was really it was beautiful. I mean, for those of you um, who don't enjoy the president's tweeting, and as I've told you before, I actually love the president. I do tweeting. too. Um, but did, no, this was as as you and I knew, and idiots pretended not to. Um, no, tweeting is one thing. A rally speech is another thing. A, a State of the Union address is something else, and it was done. It was done beautifully. It was incidentally a a bipartisan speech. Um, it just shows how hateful the Democrats and really, really, I think, out of touch, both the Democrats and the media. Are. I mean, I'm sure you, like like me, switched immediately to MSNBC when the speech was over. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. No, it was hilarious. But then, on further reflection, wow, they cannot give him credit for anything. A nice, a nice speech that that surely. Both Democrats and Republicans can agree with 80 percent of that speech. Like I say, there were some things I didn't like either. I didn't like the amnesty. I didn't like any policy he was talking about whenever the camera flashed to Ivanka. Um, and I don't <laughs> want war with North Korea, so I think I would have cut it off soon after after CJ. But But still... Most of it was was things that you would think both parties would agree with, and and their one complaint would be, um, well, well, these aren't partisan issues. I don't know why why Trump thinks uh, why the president thinks the Pledge of Allegiance and God and country and flag and family. I don't know why he thinks that's just a Republican issue. So yes, I agreed with everything he said. Oh no no no, that's not their position. Their position is. God, family, country, that's divisive. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the uh, rebuttal speech, those things never work. It's always a disaster. But this uh, Dookie Hauser Kennedy kid, <laughs> he was no, awful. It's, it's like... Uh... For the young people in the audience, we used to have these photocopy machines. <laughs> and when you photocopy something over and over and over again, the farther you get from the original, I think the moment they got away from from John F. Kennedy um, and Bobby, I guess, but, but, but John F. Kennedy, I mean, from seeing the tapes of him, he was charming and he was funny. He was kind of Obama-like in that way. Um, <laughs> the farther you get away, wow. Um, there were a few things I couldn't tweet. I was, of course, live tweeting um, the State of the Union. Um, one of the things I couldn't tweet was the, when I was watching, well, this was when I was watching the response to the State of the Union is um, we really should have caught, cut off immigration before the Irish. I could do without any of the Kennedys. <laughs> <laughs> well... And throw yeah. in Justice Brennan. Teddy Kennedy and Justice William Brennan have probably done more damage to this country than any two Americans. Yeah, they started this uh, wild, uh, out-of-control immigration. Yeah, and, and Brennan invented anchor babies in a 1982 footnote <laughs> of an opinion. He just invents it out of whole cloth. Now they act like it's you know, a precious constitutional principle written into the Constitution by James Madison. No, it was just invented out of whole cloth by Justice Brennan. This slipped in a 1982 opinion in a footnote.
no, no less, um, and Kennedy with the 1965 Immigration Act. But they've really, they've thrown all in on on changing the country. So, so Democrats and MSNBC, I didn't see any CNN. I wanted to go straight to the funnest station yeah. <laughs> immediately after this speech. They have no interest in winning normal Americans. You know, uh, the regular NBC is now as bad as MSNBC. I was watching the coverage begin at 9 o'clock, and uh, the, the most biased guy in the world, Lester Holt, goes to the biggest Trump hater, Brokaw, who opens by, you know, it, right now it's a good period for the president, but he opens by saying, it's an embattled president who's under investigation. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing all night, MSNBC, their their big complaint, which does, I think, indicate that it was a fantastic speech. <laughs> if this is the best thing they can come up with. Um, and that is, and he didn't mention Russia. <laughs> oh, Mark, this is the definition of solipsistic. No media. This is your totally neurotic obsession that no one else cares about, other than wanting to see um, this memo. Though I'm a little worried about the memo um only in the sense that republicans have a long and 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 sad history of overselling things yeah uh, you're right i noticed msnbc they kept saying over and over again we know that russia is still uh, tampering with everything <laughs> and we know now that russia will be tampering with the midterm election <laughs> oh no that is reported as fact these days and, you know, I was thinking about this. I, I should probably do some, a little bit of research before prattling about it on radio, but I haven't. Um, so, as I understand it, their big argument for the tampering was $100,000 worth of Facebook ads alerting people to things like, you know, Hillary hanging with Black Lives Matters or, or, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, but I, I looked through all those 100,000 ads. A lot of them were pro-Hillary, too. But what? Uh, were they? But yeah. Weren't they, but wasn't it? I, I mean, I, and plus, which it's not that the Russians wanted Trump. If anything, they just wanted to, you know, screw with us. Um, meanwhile, the only country I'm aware of, and perhaps there are there are others, where both the sitting president, well, I guess there was also the Vatican, the sitting president and the former president. Um, we're actually making a lot of news by campaigning against Donald Trump, Mexico, and um, I'm going to throw in the Pope here, too. So the only, the only governments that were openly campaigning for one party or another, Mexico and the Vatican. Um, yeah, but, that's whoa, a good point. Mexico tampered, Mexico tampered with the election. That is a good point. Yeah, openly. I mean, if you're worried about, you know, what the country on our southern border thinks about us, there were, just, you know, constant attacks from Vincente Fox and whomever the current um, president is. You know, uh, if you want to know who Russia was for in the election, all you had to do was watch their TV network. They run a news channel, RT, here in this country. It was the most pro-Hillary network you've ever seen. I've, I mean, they, they did take, you know, like Ed Schultz from MSNBC. Um, I wouldn't think that. I mean, they were more Sanders than Hillary. At least oh, yeah. No, well, OK, Sanders and Hillary. But for Ed Schultz, for instance, he would always have me on as the I was the pro Trump guy. And they would all look at me like I was insane. Right. <laughs> right. And I bet you he was the most. Um, I, I mean, he's. He, he, he is good on trade, and I think it used to be a big issue for the left um, not to go to war, even wars we need to fight, whereas my position is we should only go to war when we need to. Yeah, well... The, Write that down. Yeah, you'll, and send it, and send it in a, in a, on a postcard to <laughs> President Trump. Uh, are you a little worried about the midterms? There's another uh, Republican uh, retiring now, this one in New Jersey. It's like 32 Republicans are retiring. A lot of seats are opening up. Well, here's a little, here's a, here's an article I'd like written, and I don't feel like doing the research myself. So please, please send this out to your to people in the media. Um, I've seen some of these guys. I mean, one was from Pennsylvania. Who's that guy, Charlie Dent? Um, I suspect a lot of these Republicans are just cashing out. I want to know what the next job is. Um, you know, they've been they've been carrying water for their paymasters, the the Chamber of Commerce and the um, Business Roundtable um, for all this time. Okay, you want cheap labor? We're willing to wreck the country. I just want a high paying job when I get out. They're young enough that they need to take the job now, so that so they can cash out. I want to know what they're doing next. I don't think a lot of them are dropping out because. And then of course there's there's, there's Flake and Corcoran who are dropping out because they couldn't win election if there was no one else. Running. 
money. <laughs> That's a good point. A lot of them, you're right. They're dropping out to become lobbyists and make some money now, especially while, yeah. while Trump's in office. Well, I hate to say we're out of time. If you haven't gotten Ann Coulter's book, In Trump We Trust, get this book. And uh, uh, when it comes to immigration, the best book is her book, Adios America. Go get that book. It'll uh, teach you a lot about the issue. And go to AnnCoulter.com. Make sure you follow her on Twitter. And uh, your new column comes out tonight. Yes, it does, Mark Simone. AnnCoulter.com. And uh, Ann Coulter, thanks for being with us. Good to talk to you. Bye-bye. Take care.